In this video, we're going to go over the Scourge of Angolus special strike team for Dead Zone. So like Nuts and Bolts was a special strike team for the Marauders, this is a special strike team for the Nameless. If you have um, bought subscriptions for the various... Um, Vault months, I think there's about two you need, um, no three actually, you'll be able to print all of these off and um, the Goliath you will have to, um, I think you have to be subscribed for six, I think that's right, um, don't quote me on that, uh, you do need to have quite a few subscriptions for the Goliath I think, uh, but other than the Goliath you can um, print all of these off. Um, fairly easily and um, I mean even if you don't want to get the Goliath Mantic do sell um, various models that would work as the Goliath actually um, the Kraken springs to mind um, but anyway these are basically sort of the ones from um, Star Saga actually and these escaped when um, the team that Blaine sent down um, completed their mission and um, drove out the um, na Nameless from Newlantis. Yes, yes, that is the name of the um, underwater um, place. <laughs> they got rid of basically all of them and these are the survivors, essentially. So, on for the um, faction special rules, they've only got um, specialised operations. Um, these are different to the nuts and bolts ones, which all of them are. So, uh, after deciding which scenario to play, but before recon rolls, choose one of the following army-wide special rules. If more players have this option, choose in secret and reveal it simultaneously. Uh, first one is, the water forming has begun! At the start of each round, the nameless player selects one row or column in on the board, a orthogonal line of eight cubes, and rolls a d8 randomly to determine one cube on level one, affected by water geyser. Resolve it like a booby trap, triggered in that cube. Only any models are effective. Good. I'm glad it says that, because if it didn't, that'd be a problem. Enemy, any models not scattered must be removed. Any, mo any models not scattered must be moved to an adjacent empty cube by the controlling player. Ooh, the geyser cube cannot be occupied for the rest of the game. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. 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 If the cube contains an objective of any kind, scatter it to an eligible adjacent cube. Oh, that could make objective games so good for for the scourge list. Oh, oh, that's really good. I know it's uh, based on luck and randomization, but that could have so many good benefits for this list. Oh, so, oh, ho, ho. oh, the amount of possibilities you could get for that. And it's the start of each round. Oh, yes, you can't use it as well as your opponent. But apart from that, there's no downsides to it affecting you. Only fix enemies. <laughs> well, for the um, booby trap bit anyway. Oh, wow. That's insane. Close, so next one is closer than you think. The Terror, Inca, Assassin and Navigator may advance one cube when scout moves are made. Okay, so if... Has any of them got scout? Okay, Oberon's got scout, so... Um, yeah, you've got it there, that's nice. Um, but when scout moves are made, so it works when your opponent's activating scout. Mm. That's nice. That's nice. Um, gets you closer to objective games. 
there's use there. And um, also means that some of the short range shooting can get there a bit closer, so yeah, there's use there. Psychologically broken. Enemy models that have prey marker or currently in a cube with a smoke marker have the rampage keyword. Mm. Yeah, the first one is uh, based on random look, but so's this one. Um, but only works if enemies have got um, wounds on them, and if they roll, if they roll um, low, I think it's a one or two. I just yeah, if you roll a one or a two, then rampage activates for your opponent. Well, for you. So the enemy model um, gets to be controlled by you. But if you roll, if it rolls a seven or eight, it just gets controlled as normal and gets plus one speed. So it's, I think it's probably the weakest one. Um, I think it's more of a, a um, detriment than a benefit, to be honest. Last one is jellyfish. Oh, jelly, jelly flesh. Sorry, the Goliath may ignore cube or gap size limitations while moving pardon but end it must end its move on a cube it can fit in it receives a single wound at the end of the advance or sprint action when using this ability before any other triggers happen mm, it's risky but I can see the real benefits if there's a little gap and there's an enemy there or an objective could be really good. Um, it's already got a wound, so this way it'll have two wounds on it. So, eesh. honestly, closer than you think, or the water forming has begun, are the best ones, to be honest. The water forming has begun. Oh, you've got five. You've got five turns of that just, just being so much of an arse. Oh wow! And then just scattering the objectives. All over the place, so much chaos. Ooh, <laughs> nasty. So, starting with the leader, we have the Terror of New Lantis, which is basically the Terror model, which in Star Saga was really hard to kill. Actually, if you were un unlucky, it, it takes so many turns to kill. So, speed two, three, no range, fight four, survive five, armor one, three health, size two. 40 mil base. Evade, Agile, Recon 3+, plus, which is really good to see if you want to go first or not. Uh, resilient 1, Stealthy, I don't know why it's not got Resilience 2, but whatever. Uh, it's got two special orders, which um, I think one uses a splat for. Um, I'll go through the one which I don't think you use a splat for, which is Adaptive Tactics. The Terror Gains Tactician N, passively where N is the highest tactician value of an enemy model in range 4, or that was eliminated by the Terror. So, if you take out enemy leaders or certain models that um, give um, tactician, they you basically get a extra command dice. Uh, does this last for a turn? Don't know. I'm assuming it does, but it's not clear on that. It should say if it lasts for a turn. Otherwise, um, surely this means you get it um, all the time. Um, I'm assuming, well not assuming, you don't stack these. So if you kill someone with Tactician 1, um, then kill someone with Tactician 2, it doesn't stack to Tactician 3. Otherwise this would make it so you get ridiculous amounts of command dice. So the one that does use the splat, Mantic. Um, whoever's on your companion um, app team, get them to sort the um, what counts as special orders and not because this needs a bit of work. Um, what counts as orders and not. Anyway, the special orders hallucinogenic pheromones spend a special order result when your opponent uses uses an advance shoot or fight die using a model's activation. That model becomes pinned after carrying out all effects of the die. Mmm. Which is really nice. Um, and there's a fair few that give out prey, so you could be 
insane in close combat with this. Especially if you want to go for the leader, which for this faction I think is a high priority. Mm. That's a really nice, really nice splat. Really nice. The Terror is pretty decent, close combat, fast, AP1, fighting on fours, size two, so against some you're going to be bigger. Um, resilient one, so you get to reroll dice for surviving. And stealthy means your opponent ain't going to be able to get a clear shot on you, which is always good. Always good. Agile and evade, again, makes you move pretty quickly. So, yeah, it's not a bad leader. Not a bad leader at all. On the face of it, I thought, oh, it's just a terror. Yeah. But now looking at it all, it's very nice. And that recon of 3+, plus not only means you get a high chance of deciding who goes first, it also means you've got a high chance of getting some rolls on that recon table, which, yeah. Um, there ain't many leaders that recon on 3+. plus. I think there's about three. I can't remember what they are, but I think there's about three. Um, really sneaky leader. Really a sneaky leader. The terror is worth three victory points. I uh, keep missing these. <laughs> Next we have the navigator, which is basically the, um, the fear model. Uh, so if you've got the fear model, great, you've got this. And to be honest, I think it'd be more useful in this than using them as the fear, because the fear is a living legend. And to be honest, it's not that good. So, speed 1, 2, range of 5, fight of 5, survive 4, armor 1, 2 health, size 1, 25 mil base. Engineer, gas cloud, smoke, hacker. And he's got shoulder mounted phaser, which is range 4, prey, weight of fire 1, and it's worth 1 victory point. Gas cloud makes it so it's got some support capabilities. Uh, the shoulder mounted phaser, again, support capabilities. Support capabilities with prey as long as you hit your opponent's got a prey marker on it. And if you get that uh, hallucinogenic pheromones going off, that is going to be really, really powerful. In fact, that hallucinogenic pheromones might mean your opponent won't use their uh, command dice for what they're supposed to be for. And in some situations, that can be deadly, especially if you're using on the mat sedans, which we'll get to in another video. Uh, the navigator stat wise isn't bad, survives on fours, it's just basically a um, guns... Is it, are they called gunslingers? Yeah gunslingers with with slightly better stats really. Um, well m just more still fun. He's, he's not bad. Next we have the Calamiton which is the Blight. Um, I'm assuming they've made um, the stuff for it worse because it's been weakened for from all the fighting it's been done, I'm assuming. So, speed 1, 2, range of 5, fight 4, survive 4, uh, R1 armour, 3 health, size 2, 40 mil base. Okay, they made it go on a bigger base now, it weren't on a 40 mil before. Huh. Which I suppose makes sense because it's got quite a big tail. Um, okay, okay, we'll see. Uh, resilient 1, which is always nice. Uh, corrosive Blast, which is range 2, AP1, it burns. Not bad, not bad to go there. It's always nice to have an it burns thing. It's got Corrosive more, which is close combat. And it's Toxic 1, which, yeah, it's going to going to be a bit of a problem in close combat if your opponent um, against unarmoured targets that um, haven't got good survive this isn't bad but I suppose you more use it for its um, corrosive blast than anything else really I think it should have resilient 2 to be honest I think it should have resilient 2 uh, it survives on fours as well and armor one, so it's it's not like it's it's bad, but it's just all shades of all right. It's worth two victory points, by the by. Next is the rifleman. Uh, speed one, two, range of four, fight of six, five of five, armor one, two health, so far, size one, twenty five mil base. Got resilient one. Uh, it's got a crystalline rifle, range ten, prey, and worth one victory point. On most um, nameless lists I've seen, I always see at least one rifleman. I, I don't blame them for taking them, shooting on fours, range 10 and giving out prey. 
it's it's just basically a um, shoot shooting model that gives close combat support out. Nothing wrong with that. Um, Rosie one, yes, it's all it's good. It's good, especially considering riflemen are troops. Whereas at, in second edition, when they were introduced, they were uh, specialists, which. Uh, nah. <laughs> but because but because of what they are now, you do, they do get a lot more use. And considering how much prey is in here, yeah, I think it does have its uses. It does have its uses, I think, quite well. Next we have the Karated. Maybe it's the Karated Kid. Mm. Speed 2, 3, no range, fight 4, survive 5, armor 1, 2 health, size 2, 40 mil base. Uh, comes with razor claws, which are close combat, AP1, frenzy 2, and worth 2 victory points. Uh, don't know why it's worth 2 victory points. I suppose considering it's size 2 and armor 1, I guess. And it's fast, I guess. Um, but apart from being size 2... Oh, it's got beasts as well. As apart from being size 2, I haven't really got that much the any proper close combat trooper from near enough any other factions got really um, I think it should be worth one victory point to be honest but that is just me considering how much prey you've got out there it will be really good in close combat AP1, Frenzy 2 Speed 3, 2-3 two, three, should I say um, as long as you combine it with um, the effects of prey going off it's going to work really well Next we have the, the Goliath, Bane of New Lantis. Speed 1, 2, range of 5, fight of 3, survive 4, armor 1, 7 health, survive 4, 60 mil base. Beast, smash 1, solid, tenacious. Now it has a special order which isn't a special order. It should just say what it does. It's called Old Wounds, which I'm not going to bring up what it does. It effectively means it's got one less health. Why it why they just haven't changed the stats so it's got 6 health rather than 7 I have no idea um, it does mean your opponent in close combat is always going to have an extra dice because it's always got a wound on it um, but it's still a goliath because it has lashing tentacles which is range 2 not back and a lashing maw which is close combat AP 3 uh, it's got smash, size 4, it's got 6 health, fights on 3s. It's still really, really good. Even though your opponent's going to be a bit better in close combat against it. Um, that's its only downside. Cons like I say, considering how much prey's going off, it's it's going to do a lot, a lot of damage. If your opponent doesn't deal with the prey first, the close combat in here is going to be... It's, it's gonna get you, it just is. Next we have Oberon, which is the one, actually the only useful nameless living legend. Uh, but on here is a specialist, for some reason. Anyway, speed 1, 2, range of 4, fight of 4, survive 4, all the 4s. No armour, 2 health, size 1, 25mm base, resilient 1, scout and stealthy. Nice. He has a Needler, which is range 5, Prey, weight far 1, and Toxic Shards, which are toxic in close combat. Uh, he's worth 2 rich points, uh, the Goliath is worth 4. Uh, so back to Oberon, he's, he's got some swiftness with the Scout, and the Needler being range 5, you've got a bit of range on to have the Prey going off. Um, with falls across the board, is not that easy to take down. And with stealth, um, you're not going to get over an open shot on him, which means he can just be an objective and like, here I am, come and get me if you will. Um, toxic's all right. He, he could do close combat, but is really there to set prey off. I think that's what he's there for mainly. Next is the needle drone. Speed 2, 3, range of 6, no fight stat, survive 5, no armour, 2 health, size 1, 40 mil base. Agile and hacker. Uh, psychic burst, which is range 2, blast, explosive, psychic and worth 1 victory point. Uh, explode, I've, 
again in every nameless list I always see a needle drone. I've always wondered why for a long time until you realise it has blast and it's psychic. You don't need to see your target and you can just make things explode, just shoot them off the area. It doesn't do any damage but it will pin enemies and it will throw them around. If they're on the objective it's really useful. Um, it's also quite fast as well. Yes it hits on 6 plus at range but it's possible to do it. I mean, even if it dies, it's only worth from victory points, so you're not like you you're losing all that much. Um, I think it's possibly the weakest here, although that psychic burst. Uh, if you make it work, if you make it work, which the, there's always ways to make it work, always ways to make it work. But I think honestly, it's possibly the weakest. Next we have the Gunslinger, which I don't know if it gets much use as the Rifleman. Um, I don't think it ever got much use, but um, it's like a cheap, slightly cheaper um, Rifleman. Actually, I think it's about 5 points cheaper, I think. I think that's right, anyway. Uh, speed 1, 2, range 5, fight 5, survive 5, arm 1, 2 health, size 1, 25mm base. Uh, it's got a hacker, yeah. Uh, twin crystalline pistols, range three, prey, rapid fire, wait for one and one victory point. Um, it's all right. Gives out prey again, like a lot of them do. Uh, it's short range though. I think I think it's just because we we need the gunslinger in there. Just chuck one in. I think it would have been better if you put um, two to Rathalman in to be honest. I think that would have would have helped. Um want to be that money more points if you want to kind of make it look like it's more balanced. I, I wouldn't do that to be honest. Or change the Rathalman for two gunslingers. Because the being short range, really short range, is 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 just hurting. Next we have the Assassin. Speed two three, no range value. Fight five, survive five, armor one, two health Size 1, 25mm base. Beast, jump pack and stealthy. Has claws which close combat, frenzy 2, AP um, and 1 victory point, not AP 1. It's an alright close combat, it's got no AP but it's fast and it's got frenzy 2. It's got a jump pack which is all shades are good. And stealth, stealth is always great. Uh, you can put it on objective and you won't get a clear sight to shoot it which is always great. Um, plus, with the amount of praise that's going off, chances are it will get an extra dice in close combat. Um, it's it's not bad. It's not bad at all. I don't think the assassin. It's not your best close combat here, but it's still not a bad one. Finally, we have the Inca. Speed one two. No range stat. Fight of six. Survive of six. No armor. Two health. Size one. Twenty five mil base. It's got teeth, which is close combat, and it's worth one victory point. Uh, Inksack means you get a one use only smoke to put down and when it dies it puts smoke down. To be honest, I think getting rid of the gunslinger would have been... Yeah, get rid of the gunslinger and have another Inker in there instead. Um, there's quite a lot of prey going off as it is and having ink as well with the smoke that's that'd really really help I think. <laughs> Um, actually, actually, what I would have done is get rid of the gunslinger and the needle drone and just have two inkers. <laughs> have a lot of prey and a lot of smoke going off, and yeah, your opponent's not going to know what the hell's going off. <laughs> uh, mm. oh, would that have made him overpowered? No. But because of how, how small the Inca model actually is. Oh the amount of horribleness you could do there. And I could I could I could actually do that, to be honest. With the normal um uh, normal nameless list, you could probably do that. <laughs> the scourge list is all about 
getting prey markers off and really com confusing your enemies. They've got a lot of speed on their side and they're really good in close combat. And with them, them special operations, you can really annoy your opponent with them, especially the water forming has begun. That one could be an absolute game changer and I think when Mantic's got more data on how this faction, well how this strike team works, mm, I think it probably going to need toning down because that is really good, that is really good. So thank you for watching this video, goodbye for now.